Good afternoon. Let's talk bacteria. As we look at bacteria, you'll see here are some examples. They can be many different shapes and such, and they are in a category that we call prokaryotes. If you remember back from the beginning of the year, a prokaryote is a cell that does not have a nucleus. It still has DNA, but that DNA is not enclosed in a nucleus. So here we have the definition for a prokaryotic cell does not have a true nucleus or membrane-bound organelles. These would be like mitochondria or endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes and such. Bacteria does not have those. And they dominate our biosphere. Okay, interesting thought here. Their collective biomass outweighs all eukaryotes, that's all plants and animals and fungus, combined by at least tenfold. So what this means is that the bacteria on Earth, all of their mass, if we put all the bacteria together with all of their mass, it's going to weigh more than if we put all of the plants and animals and fungus together and weigh all of their mass. Consider that our own bodies have more bacteria than cells. Okay. Some bacteria are very harmful and they will cause disease. Most are benign or beneficial. Benign means they're not dangerous at all, okay? So very, very few actually cause disease. They are very successful because of their rapid cell division. They divide very, very rapidly as we saw in our graphing activity. Metabolic diversity, um, they eat kind of different things and such like that. They can double their numbers every 20 minutes and live in environments that support no other forms of life. They can live in the depths of volcanoes, in the bottom of an ocean, places where you would not actually consider their other life to be. Okay. Separated into two different domains. Domains are like the big, big things out there. We know kingdoms, like we have the kingdom of plant, kingdom of animals, kingdom of fungus, and such, but we have domains to be with this. We've got archaea, and the kingdom archaea is going to be archaea bacteria. Archaea actually means ancient. And we get the domain of just bacteria. Bacteria, this was the first domain that we actually found, and that's why we called it bacteria. We have our U bacteria. U here means true. Okay, archaea means old. We believe that these ones were the first to be on Earth, but we discovered them after all these other bacteria that are within our bodies. Okay, the U bacteria or the true, great variety in these organisms that belong here, um, and they're found in every environment on Earth cold, hot, wet, dry, everything. Um, they have a cell wall that contains polysaccharide. Poly means many, and saccharide is a sugar. So it's a many sugar, and it's, that is called your peptiglycogen. Okay, the archaea bacteria, under a microscope, they look very similar to the eubacteria. They're small, they don't have a nucleus, and they do have a cell wall. Chemically is where they are very different. They don't have the peptidoglycans found in the eubacteria, and they have a different membrane, lipid. Remember, the lipid is going to be like the fats and oils that are helping cover the membranes in order to keep them safe. And they live in the very harsh environments. Remember, this is, a, this is very deep in the ocean, our thermo uh, kind of almost volcanic activity there. Found almost everywhere. Best environment for growth. Okay, so this is the best. It's not the only environment, but this is the best. Temperature between 80 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what our bacteria is within our incubator. Moisture, they do like moisture. Suitable food source, the agar that we have them growing on is providing the food. Darkness, they can be, um, they grow better in the dark and they need space, okay? With our own bacteria, if we continue to grow and continue to grow, after a while, they're gonna run out of space and so they will stop growing on their own. Okay. Very large in comparison to a virus. Check this out. Here's our bacteria. 
Here's our virus. Our bacteria is huge. We can see them under a microscope. We cannot see a virus under a normal microscope. We would actually have to look at them under an electron microscope. So prokaryotes, that's our bacteria, identified by several characteristics. Shape, materials composing the cell wall, the way they move, and the way they obtain energy. So four ways that they actually are identified. Three basic shape. The coxae are spherical. So spherical means they're kind of a circular shape. Bacilli are your rod shaped. So they're more of your rectangles. And spirilla are spiral shaped. Okay. So oh, this should be mobile, not motel. Um, and others do not move at all. So that should be, sorry for that, mobile. So they move. Others don't move at all. Some move by flagella. That's a whip-like structure that'd be coming off here. These would help it actually move. Some lash or snake forward. Others glide slowly over the slime they secrete. Most bacteria being harmless, such as our soil bacteria or the bacteria within your own body, within your intestines and your stomach and your mouth and such, helping aid in digestion. Only some are actually pathogenic and cause diseases. We'll get more into that later on. And at this point, this is the end of our notes, but you're going to write a summary that is written at the bottom of your notes. As far as the questions in the video, I will be looking at those probably sometime Friday afternoon. So good talking to you, and we will see you in class.